السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ نحمد و نسلی و نسلم علی رسول الکریم اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم محمد الرسول اللہ قال النبی محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم المرء مع من حب او کما قال علیہ الصلاۃ والسلام اللہ رب محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نحن عباد محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وعلى دویہ وآلہ ابد الدہور وکرم رب اشرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی شفہ نظرت الرحیم الکاشف للکربی سنہ عن کل الہلاکی سیدی خیر النبی غاص عظم بمن بے سر اسامہ مدد قبل دی مدد کعب ایمہ مدد یا صاحب الناہور کل ناصری فی السمع والعضا وحسن الباصری وبطول عمر اللہ بعمر قاصری یا مجمع الخیرات عبد القادری مخدوم محترم حضرت علامہ مولانا محمد حسین صاحب قبلہ حضرت مولانا عارف پٹیل صاحب قبلہ اور دیگر علماء کرام نات خان حضرات ماشاءاللہ حافظ فیصل صاحب نے بہت ہی پیارے انداز سے کلام اعلیٰ حضرت اور کلام مفتی اعظم پیش فرمایا اینڈ مائی ڈیئر ریسپیکٹڈ ایلڈرز اینڈ بردرس حضرت سے جب سن رہا تھا کلام تو آئی آلسو فیل دیٹ شوڈ آئی ریسائٹ سم قصیدہ ان پریس آف سرکار غوث اعظم رضی اللہ عنہ لیکن میں نات خان تو نہیں ہوں بس اللہ تعالیٰ سرکار کے سنا خانوں میں غوث اعظم کے سنا خانوں میں شامل کر لے بس یہی بڑی بات ہے سو لیٹ اس ان شاء اللہ ریسائٹ فیو اسٹنزاس آف دی قصیدہ کمپوز بائی سیدی استاد زمن مولانا حسن رضا خان رحمۃ اللہ تعالی علیہ اسیروں کے مشکل کو شاشا سے آزم مسیروں کے مشکل کو شاشا سے آزم فقیروں کے حاجت روا قسم ہے کہ مشکل کو مشکل نہ پایا قسم ہے کہ مشکل کو مشکل نہ پایا کہا ہم نے جس وقت یا آزم کہا ہم نے جس وقت یا آغم میری مشکلوں کو بھی آسان کی جی میری مشکلوں کو مشکل کو شاہ سے آزم کے ہیں آپ مشکل کو شاہ سے آزم کہے کہ سے جا کر حسن اپنے دل کی کہے جا کر کہے کیسے جا کر حسن اپنے دل کی سنے کون تیرے سیوان 
غوثِ آزم سنے کون تیرے سیوا غوثِ آزم اسیروں کے مشکل کو شاہ غوثِ آزم فقیروں کے حاجت روا غوثِ آزم رضی اللہ علیہ وسلم My dear brothers, I had a wish for a long time to do the ziyarah of Maulana Hussain Sahab Qibla when I got to know that he has translated the book of Allah Hazrat Al-Amn Wal-Ula Lina'atil Mustafa Bidafi'il Bala in English language. And Alhamdulillah by his permission we published 1,000 copies and distributed in our Aqeedah conference what we used to do annually in Sri Lanka. So, mashallah, it was much appreciated. Since that day, I had a wish to do the ziyarah of Hazrat and alhamdulillah, I did it today by the grace of Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala. And the name of that book, Al-Amnu wal-Ula, Lina'atil Mustafa, Bidafi'il Bala, how beautifully Allah Hazrat has described that it is for him, 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 it is for him. The one who is addressing Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the removal of the calamities, Ya Rasulallah, anta dafi'il bala, is tarah ko yagar bulata hai, to uske liye bulandi hai, uske liye aman hai. This is why Allah Hazrat, with confidence he says, khauf na rakh raza zara, tu to hai abd Mustafa. Why should you worry? Why should you have fear, O Raza? Because you are the servant of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khauf na rakh raza zara, tu to hai abd Mustafa. تیرے لیے امان ہے تیرے لیے امان ہے اللہ اکبر دا عقیدہ گیون بھئی آلہ حضرت امام احمد رضا رحمت اللہ علیہ is what is mentioned in the Quran and in the حادیث of نبی کریم صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم so الحمدللہ what we recite in our kalima for us to be called as believers is لا الہ الا اللہ محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم a person may claim one lakh times la ilaha illallah he is not regarded as a believer unless he say Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but the thing is everyone is reciting this kalima and everyone is claiming to be the proper believers but everyone can't everyone can't be on the proper path can't be har koi barabar ho hi nahi sakta reason not because مولانا عارف پٹیل اور مولانا حسین اور ان کے برادر مولانا کلیم صاحب حفظ اللہ یا دیگر علماء کرام نے کہا نہیں اور نہ ہی اس لیے کہ ہمیں ہمارے اصلاف نے کہا نو the reason behind that is your نبی my نبی the نبی for the entire creation رسول کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم had foretold this that there will be 73 divisions اس میں 72 جہنم میں جائیں گے اور ایک ہی جنت میں جائے گا but the thing is when 72 sects who are not on the proper aqeedah of the Quran and the ahadith and they do not repent even, they do not come back to the fold of Ahlul Sunnah, they remain in that aqeedah and if they die in light of the Quran and the ahadith, they can't enter Jannah. This is not what we see. Allah states and his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned this. Achha, fir, sab kalma padhte hain, sab la ilaha illallah padhte hain. لیکن کلمہ پڑھنے میں ان کا اور ہمارے درمیان کچھ ڈیفرنسز ہے ان دا سیم کلمہ سیم لا الہ الا اللہ دیا ایز ای ڈیفرنس فار ایکزامپل وین وی سی اللہ کے سوا کوئی معبود نہیں دیا از نن وردی آف ورشپ ایکسپٹ اللہ تبارک و تعالی وہ بھی یہی کہتے ہیں نا وٹ از دا ڈیفرنس فرسٹ آف آل یو شوڈ انڈرسٹین دس دیٹ دیا ایز ای بیلیف what they propagate by misquoting the verse of the Holy Quran. That is, Ar-Rahman al arsh istawa The translation what they give is, Allah is seated on the throne. Allah arsh par betha hua hai. Now, reciting kalima, the same kalima what we recite, they do believe that Allah is seated on the arsh and we never believe that. Because Allah is free from place, free from space, free from shape. 
اللہ تعالیٰ ہر چیز سے پاک ہے اسپیس بھی اللہ نے بنایا پلیس بھی اللہ نے بنایا شیپ بھی اللہ ہی نے بنایا اللہ تعالیٰ ان سب چیزوں سے پاک ہے ناؤ یو سی دے کلیم ٹو بی دا ریئل بلیورز یٹ دے ہیو دس بلیف اینڈ وی الحمد للہ ناٹ اونلی وی کلیم ٹو بی ریئل بلیورز الحمد للہ وی آر ریئل بلیورز جب تک ہمیں ہمارے ایمان میں کانفیڈنس نہیں ہوگا فائدہ کیا ہے یو شوڈ بی کانفیڈنٹ دیٹ یو آر اے بلیور آپ کو کانفیڈنس ہونا چاہیے کہ ہاں میں مسلمان ہوں اور ایسا جیسا اللہ نے کہا اللہ نے جس طرح اپنے بارے میں ایمان رکھنے کے لیے کہا اس طرح ایمان رکھنا ضروری ہے اور اللہ نے جس طرح رسولوں پر فرشتوں پر کتابوں پر ایمان رکھنے کا حکم فرمایا اس طرح ایمان رکھنا ضروری ہے اف وی بلیو دا وے وی وانٹ یو کانٹ بی اے ریئل بلیور سو نو دے سے اللہ از سیٹڈ آن دی عرش بائی مس کوٹنگ دا قرآن نو یو کین آسک دم دس کوشچن اٹس ناٹ دیٹ یو آر ان اویئر ماشاء اللہ علماء آ ایڈوکیٹنگ جسٹ بیکاز یو ہیو گیون می اے اسٹیج ہی ایز اے ڈیوٹی ایم جسٹ مینشننگ دیز فیو تھنگس وی شوڈ آسک دم عرش از اے کریشن اور اے کریٹر واٹ از اٹ دا ترون از اے کریشن اور اے کریٹر آئی وانٹ دی آنسر فرام دی آڈینس کریشن If they say Allah is seated on the arsh, that means Allah is seated on His creation. And Allah existed always, eternal. Arsh was not in existence because everything other than Allah is hadith, which was not before, which was created by Allah. Wa ta'ala. And Allah ta'ala azali abadi qadim eternal. تو یہ فرق ہے اب جب عرش از اے کریشن اینڈ ون دے سے اللہ از سیٹڈ آن دی عرش دین آس دس کوشچن وی آر واز اللہ بفور ہی کریٹڈ دی عرش عرش کو پیدا کرنے سے پہلے اللہ کہاں تھا ون تھنگ انادر تھنگ از ان سائز عرش از اے ہیوج کریشن بہت بڑی اس کی سائز ہے بیونڈ آر امیجنیشن سو ون دے سے دیٹ اللہ از سیٹڈ آن دی عرش نو وین آئی ایم سیٹڈ آن دی چیئر there is a limitation meri ek limit ban gayi and if they say allah is seated on the arsh then they are fixing a limit for allah tbaraka wa taala they are fixing a shape for allah tbaraka wa taala which goes again the, against the aqeedah of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa and further you find another hadith of nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam apparently the translation is allah descends on the first heaven during the time of tahajjud You may have heard this hadith on the excellence of tahajjud. You find this in the books of ahadith. Ke Allah Ta'ala pehle aasman pe nuzul farmata hai. Now, what they give the explanation from this hadith is, especially the person who is regarded as the imam of the Wahhabism, Ibn Taymiyyah, he descended from his member saying, Allah is tarah utar ke aata hai. Allah is descending this way step by step. سیونتھ ہیون سے سکس تک سکس تے فائیو تک فائیو تے فائیو سے فور تک اسی طرح پہلے آسمان پہ اللہ اتر کر آتا ہے ناؤ دس بلیف ناؤ ٹیل می آنیسٹلی اف اے پرسن از ہیونگ دس بلیف تو اللہ کا پیر بھی ثابت ہوا اللہ کا جسم ثابت ہوا ناؤ دس اگین گوز اگینسٹ دی ہولی قرآن ولم یک الح کفون احد لئی سکمت لہی شعی نو سی دا بلیف واٹ دے پروپگیٹ دیٹ اللہ اتر کر آتا ہے ہی از ڈسینڈنگ لائک ہی شوڈ بائی کمنگ ڈاؤن فرام ہز ممبر اسٹیپ بائی اسٹیپ ناؤ ان دس اگین انادر کوشچن دیٹ اللہ تبارک و تعالیٰ از ڈسینڈنگ ڈیورنگ دا ٹائم آف تہجد ایز وی فائنڈ ان دی احادیث اف دیٹ literal meaning the direct meaning has to be taken then there can be another question today in uk the time is 8:24 approx now this is isha time isha time is over now still isha time because fajr is yet to come in sri lanka now the time is about 1 am so this is still isha time In some other countries, if you go to Singapore, the time is 3.30 a.m. If you go to Japan, now the time is 4.30 a.m. That means it is Fajr time in Japan. Tahajjud time in Singapore. Isha time in UK. Now according to them, when Allah is descending on the first heaven during Tahajjud time, if I... I am seated on the chair. When I come down, I am no more on the chair. 
when I get up from the floor, I'm no more on the floor. Now, when they say Allah is descending from the arsh to the first heaven, that means Allah is not on arsh at this moment. During the time of tahajjud, Allah is on the first heaven. Rest of the time, Allah is on arsh. Now, ask those idiotic people this question that according to your belief, if Allah is on the arsh for the people of UK, for the people of Sri Lanka, then according to you, at this given time, for the people of Singapore, Allah has to be on the first heaven. So that means for the people of Singapore, Allah is not on the arsh. For the people of UK, Allah is on the arsh. So you say, we believe in one Allah, yet you believe in two lords. One is on the arsh, one is on the heaven. Do you understand the difference? Jab ek hi wakt mein, Allah Ta'ala isha ke wakt, fajar ke wakt, zohar ke wakt, arsh par hota hai, tahajjud ke wakt utarta hai, to jis jaga pe tahajjud ka wakt abhi hai, according to them, Allah is on the first heaven. And in other rest of the countries, Allah is still on the arsh. So they call us mushrik, yet they believe into Allah. See how idiotic is this. Now, now what would be the meaning of this ahadith? Now, ab iska matlab kya hoga? Apparently to ye tarjuma hu. But what is the meaning? So, in this, ulama kiram have given the explanation, the one who gets up for tahajjud, this ibadah, Allah's mercy is closer to him. Allah ta'ala ke rahmat usse qareeb hai. Now, we, let him ask duas. Allah ta'ala will accept his duas because Allah's mercy is waqt josh mein hai. Allah ta'ala nida farmata hai ke, ay mere bando, mangna hai, mango, bakshish mango, rozi mango, is tarah ke nida aati hai. So the explanation is the mercy of Allah is closer to them, not that physically Allah is descending. If you believe in that, you believe in physical God, which is no difference of Mushrikeen's belief. So ye the followers of Wahhabism who promote this belief and they accuse we Sunni Muslims that we are Mushrik. In reality, they have the belief of the Mushrikeen by have, believing in physical God. Now, what does the meaning of Ar-Rahman al al istawa? According to them, Allah is seated on the arsh. Here the meaning would be that Allah wa Taala's control is over the arsh. Because it's a huge creation. Now, if I say, I saw Maulana Hussain Sahab carrying 30 kilo weight bag. I have seen that, so I don't need a dalil now. Now, if someone say, okay, he can carry 30 kilos. Can he carry 10 kilos? Show me a dalil. It's absurd, right? A person who can carry 30 kilos, he can easily carry 10 kilos. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala ne ek misal ke liye samjha raha Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala ka control sabse badi creation in size. Sabse azim creation to humare aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in size sabse badi creation arsh hai. To badi creation pe jab control hai to it is understood on every creation Allah's control. So, matlab kuch aur hai aur ye log pesh kuch aur karte hai. Now, you saw the difference. They recite the kalima, the same kalima, la ilaha illallah. But about a Lord, what do they believe is totally different and it's against the Quran and the ahadith of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, they come to another argument. That is, once a slave woman came to the holy court of Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raised, raised the question, where is Allah? Now the slave woman pointed like this. By referring to this hadith, they started saying that, see, that slave woman said, no, Allah is up. So that means he's in the sky. By referring to this hadith, they say Allah is on the sky. Now this is again against their own belief because according to them, when Allah is on arsh all the time, only at the time of the hajjud is descending, then if that slave woman said he is on the heaven, then it's against their belief. It's like a asman ka tazkara. Inke aqidhe ke mutabik to arsh par hai. Lekin wo slave woman ne asman ka tazkara kiya. To this hadith, what they quote, is against their own belief. To iske liye unko kya karna chahiye? They should prove it that that question our Nabi asked her was during the time of tahajjud. For it to be correct according to them that Allah is on the heavens. But it was not at the time of tahajjud. So now you see, because they do not believe in one thing, a proper thing, they don't want you also to believe in that. And they want you to believe what they believe. 
though it is against the Quran and the hadith of Nabi Pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So now a person having this belief about our Rabb, our Rabb, whose kalima we recite, whom we worship, that he is physical, he descends, he comes down, he goes up. These sort of jokes made with regards to Allah wa ta'ala, how can we make such a person with such belief a imam? How can we accept him as even a scholar? But you know why am I mentioning this is, I can see, mashallah, many youths, you, there are many students who are studying in universities, you know, you may have heard the teachings, the books of Dr. Bilal Phillips. You may have heard Dr. Mohsin Khan, whose Bukhari Sharif translation is very popular and unfortunately in every Sunni home you find that. And school syllabuses are made by Dr. Bilal Phillips and mostly it comes through Darus Salaam publication. In those publications it is mentioned that Allah has two hands, Allah has two legs, Allah has a face, Allah has two eyes. All these things are mentioned. We have read that. In school textbook of grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, our children who are 14, 15, 16 years age, they have been taught with this corrupt belief today. So when it is being taught in Sri Lanka, in India, in other parts, obviously their teachings may be here as well. So your children should not have such a belief by following their teachings. It's our duty to be always under the shadow of ulama of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah in order to protect our Iman. And you know, as I mentioned, Dr. Mohsin Khan, I should talk with, a, with an evidence. If not, it's not correct. Hadith of Bukhari Sharif. Now, in India and Pakistan, in Sri Lanka, in Uzbekistan, in Egypt, in Yemen, in Syria, there are many mazarat of awliya, many. And Alhamdulillah, we visit out of love, out of respect. Because why do we visit? In light of the hadith of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the grave of a believer is a garden of Jannah. When a grave of a believer is garden of Jannah, then what about the grave of awliya, the friend of Allah? So in order to be near the garden of Jannah, we go to the Mazar Sharif of Awliya. And in the garden of Jannah, you find mercy of Allah or the wrath of Allah. Allah ki rahmat hi hoti hai. To Allah ki rahmat jahan nazil hoti hai, waha hum rahmat ke qatre hasil karne ke liye ja rahe. We are going to find the mercy of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, the drops from the mercies of Allah Ta'ala. So this can't be shirk, this can't be innovation because this is a source of the rahmat of Allah wa Ta'ala. Allah has kept several doors for these mercies and this is one of the sources. Okay, now when we go to the mazar of awliya kiram, they simply call us as grave worshippers. Now my dear brothers, if we are to be labeled as grave worshippers for visiting the mazar of awliya and ambiya, a grave worshipper, he doesn't need to go to a grave of awliya to worship. A grave worshipper, even he can go to any Christian's graveyard and worship because he's a grave worshipper. Jisko worship karna hai, wo kahi bhi patthar mele, usko worship kar lega. Hum grave worshippers nahi hai, hum worship ke liye nahi jaate. There is a huge difference between respect and worship. But they misquote that even the term respect has been used as worship in order to confuse the people. So now you find the Hadith Sharif in Bukhari Sharif, Kitab salah Babul Masajid Illati Ala Turqil Madida. The Masajid in which our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam offered prayer on the way to Madina. Bukhari Sharif me ye chapter aapko milega. Us chapter me ek Hadith se paak hai ke Hazrat Abdullah Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma. He is instructing his student Hazrat Nafi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that oh Nafi you are going to so and so place there is a masjid and beside the masjid there are qabrani aw thalathatun two or three graves. Nabi Paak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had offered prayer in that masjid where nearby there are two or three graves. I also have offered prayer. You are going there. You also offer prayer there. Is se kya pata chala ke mazar ke kareeb agar masjid hai to waha namaz padna huzur ki sunnat se sabit. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar ki bhi sunnat aur Hazrat Nafi ki bhi sunnat. Yani sahabi, tabi aur nabi paak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ka amal is se sabit hua. But what they did is when this chapter came, I have seen the published version of Dr. Mohsin Khan and it is available online as well. You can even Google search it. Volume number one, book number eight, hadith number 472 or 473. Volume number one, 
Book number eight, Kitabu Salah, Hadith number 472 or 473. You see, Google it and see. He has said the below chapter is with regards to those masajid in which Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam offered prayer on the way to Medina. The below ahadis are impossible to translate. Impossible. Ab us hadith me fayusalli dhuhra hai. Fi dhalikal masjid hai. Kisi bachche se puche fi dhalikal masjid ka matlab kya hai? In that masjid. Qabrani, two graves. Thalathatun. Ye toh har bachcha jantai hai. Thalatha maane teen. Had they said, I do not want to translate this hadith because I do not believe in this, that praying salah in a masjid beside the mazar is shirk or haram or bidah. For that reason, I did not translate. We would have accepted him because at least he showed that he is wrong. According to us, he is wrong, but he disclosed it. But what did he say? It is impossible to translate. Jis admi ne kareeb 6-7,000 hadith translate kar liya ho Bukhari Sharif ka. Aur is hadith ke baare mein kahe ke impossible to translate. Na mumkin. What a fabrication this is. Now you see, because they do not believe in it, they don't want you also to believe. Now unfortunately, those books are in our homes as well. And we think English translation of Bukhari Sharif, this will help us. But no, my dear brothers, they are to destroy our iman. Always refer to the books of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah scholars. And another example, there is a hadith in chapter of sleeping, the dua before sleeping, like we recite, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Similarly, there is another dua recorded in Bukhari Sharif, bismika rabbi wa da'atu jambi wa bika arfa'u, in amsakta nafsi farhamha wa in arsaltaha fahfadha bima tahfad bihi ibadaka salihin the mafhum is that ya Allah in your name I am going to sleep and in your name I will be raising up in the morning and ya Allah during my sleep if I die you forgive me what a beautiful dua is nind mein mujhe maut a jaye to mujhe bakhsh dena meri ruh ko tu bakhsh dena farhamha us par rahim karna have mercy on my soul in arsaltaha and if you give my ruh back because sleep is also a small death when you give my ruh back when i get up in the morning fahfadha ya allah protect my iman subhanallah what a beautiful dua our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taught us ya allah fahfadha mere iman ki hifazat farmana itna kafi tha you make this dua fahfadha ya allah protect my iman it would have been enough but nabi pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam added some more words Bima tahfaz bihi ibadaka salihin. Ya Allah, the way you protect your awliya, the way you protect your pious servants, protect my soul. Protect my iman. Now for the protection of iman, our Nabi has instructed us to make dua by the wasila of the awliya. Wasila of the awliya, for what? For the protection of Iman. If anyone wants this dua, they can contact them. And I have also an image I can forward to inshallah. Bismika Rabbi wa da'atu jambi wa bika arfa'u in amsakta nafsi farhamha wa in arsaltaha fahfadha bima tahfad bihi ibadaka salihin. Now protection of Iman, which is a great thing. There is nothing greater than Iman. Jab Iman jaysi azim dolat wasile se jaiz hai, to dunia wi cheeze wasile se kaise haram ho gai? Now those who say wasila is haram as Dr. Zakir Naik claimed there are over 25 verses in the Quran to say wasila is haram whereas he related to verses he quoted the verses related to idol worshipping and worshipping is different asking Allah saying Ya Allah by the honour of my parents I seek your forgiveness can you say this is wrong? Aap Allah ki barga mein dua karte Ya Allah mere maa baap ke sadaqe mein mujh par rahim farma how come this be wrong? تو جب ماں باپ کے صدقے میں اللہ سے دعا مانگنا یہ غلط نہیں تو حضور کا وسیلہ پیش کرنا کیسے غلط ہو جائے گا اور یہاں ہمارے نبی اولیاء کا وسیلہ کی تعلیم ہمیں دیتے ہیں کہ ایمان کے لیے ان کا وسیلہ پیش کیا گیا ہے ہمیں تعلیم دی گئی یہ تو ایمان جیسے عظیم دولت وسیلے سے جائز تو باقی چیزیں کیسے حرام ہو گئی now because they do not believe in وسیلہ what he did you know Arabic حدیث is mentioned but that particular hadith has not translated. Empty rakha hai. You can see the published version or even the online version. Hadith in Arabic you can find, but the English translation is not there. Why? If the people refers to that translation, they will get to know Wasila is proven from Bukhari Sharif. 
and they do not believe in this they don't want you or your children also to believe in it mazar sharif ke bazu mein masjid hai masjid mein namaz jaiz they do not believe in it so they have not translated that hadith by using the term that it is impossible to translate how hypocritic is kitni badi hypocrisy ab jo aadmi hadith ko rakh ke apni hypocrisy dikhaye usko hum kaise hamara imam mane the one who is hiding the hadith of nabi pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam by telling a lie that it is impossible to translate how can we accept them as scholars no my dear brothers now this i referred to few things with regards to la ilaha illallah are you clear with this my dear brothers are you clear with this if there is any doubt you may ask your questions shall i will try or our ulama inshallah will guide the next part muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now i do the translation muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was rasul of allah did i say right what was the mistake i did that's a mistake but you know i have seen a book published in bombay which says muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah ke rasul the in school textbook was my dear brothers ask any scholar from the time of sahaba until today from ahlu sunnati wal jamaa have they ever translated this as was no everywhere you find is rasul of allah and even the verse which i recited the part of the verse of surah al fath muhammadur rasulullah you refer to the translation by ala hazrat imam ahmad raza which is alhamdulillah in urdu language the perfect translation and even if you refer to the translations done by the deviant followers do not refer ever i'm just telling for the sake of research when you see that there also you find muhammad is rasul of allah but in school textbooks how are they making your children away from the right path saying was another thing what they mention is nabi pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam announced his prophethood at the age of 40 they say he was given prophethood at the age of 40. whereas the reality is he announced his prophethood at the age of 40 then when was he nabi he himself says kuntu nabiyya wa adamu bayna ar-ruh wal jasad i was a prophet even when hazrat adam alayhi salam was between the soul and the body between the water and clay i was a nabi so they do not accept the words by nabi pak sallallahu alayhi salam they in order to misguide our children they play with the ahadith they play with the verses of the quran and they write these types of beliefs now when muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is rasul of allah is rasul is messenger so now what are the qualities of rasul we have to ask from quran allah taala states wa ma arsalna mir rasulin illa bi lisan qawm allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi be fikr rahiye iman ki baat aati hai to shaitan kuch na kuch gadbadi karta hai so this is a sign of success alhamdulillah he is trying to deviate us اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد المعدن الجود والكرم وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم now we have to ask from the holy quran allah taala states وما ارسلنا من رسول الا بلسان قومه the mafhum is that the messengers we sent towards a nation the messengers who are sent towards their nations the language of that nation is taught to that messenger by allah اللہ جس قوم کی طرف رسول کو بھیجتا ہے اس قوم کی زبان سکھا کر بھیجتا ہے وٹ ڈوڈ یو انڈرسٹینڈ ہو از دا ٹیچر فار دی پروفٹس اللہ اللہ ٹیچرز دا لینگویجز آف دی نیشنس ٹو دی پروفٹس سو اللہ از دا ٹیچر فار دی پروفٹس ناؤ دس از دا تھنگ دو سو سی دیٹ نبی پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واز ال لٹریٹ معاد اللہ اردو میں کیا کہیں گے ال لٹریٹ کو ان پڑھ جاہل ارے جس نبی کا کلمہ پڑھتے ہو ان کو لٹریٹ کہتے ہو سینگ ہی واز ناٹ سین ریڈنگ اینڈ رائٹنگ از ڈفرنٹ اینڈ ڈونٹ نو ٹو ریڈ اینڈ رائٹ از ڈفرنٹ اف یو ہیو ناٹ سین می سوئمنگ یو کین سی آئی ڈونٹ نو ٹو سوئم ناٹ سینگ از ڈفرنٹ اینڈ ناٹ نوئنگ از ڈفرنٹ سی ہاؤ دے مس کوٹ ناؤ اے کوشچن ارائزز اللہ تعالیٰ اسٹیٹس ان دی قرآن 
الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي الذي يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل يأمرهم بالمعروف وينهاهم عن المنكر ويحل لهم ويحل لهم الطيبات ويحرم عليهم الخبائث ويدع عنهم إسرهم والأغلال التي كانت عليهم الله تعالى states about نبي باك صلى الله عليه وسلم's qualities that the successful believer is the one who believes in my Habib صلى الله عليه وسلم who is a Nabi, who is a Rasul, who is Ummi, whose name is mentioned, whose praise is mentioned in Injil, whose praise is mentioned in Taurat, who is giving the command for the right things and who is forbidding from the evil things, who makes pure things as halal, who makes impure things as haram and who removes the calamities from the people, removes the burdens of the people. So Allah Ta'ala has given the Prophet of Allah to the Prophet. کہ یہ نبی بھی ہیں یہ رسول بھی ہیں یہ امی بھی ہیں یہ نیکیوں کا حکم دیتے ہیں برائیوں سے روکتے ہیں پاک چیزوں کو حلال فرماتے ہیں حضور حلال فرماتے ہیں ناپاک چیزوں کو حرام فرماتے ہیں اللہ has given the authority to نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم that he makes things حلال he makes things حرام to whomever he wishes he makes it حلال to whomever he wishes he makes it حرام now you have heard can you wear gold and silver except for the ring, silver ring. Can you wear gold? No. But Hazrat Suraqa radiallahu ta'ala and who did wear, why? Because Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Suraqa, I see gold bangles in your hand of Kisra. So now this was foretold by Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When, when Hazrat Suraqa had not accepted Islam yet, after Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left this world, once Hazrat Suraqa radiallahu and who was seriously ill, People thought that he may leave this world. As I recall, I'm just recalling the incident. He said that people thought that he may leave this world. And when they came to do the iyadat, he said, what are you thinking? Do you think that I will leave this world? No, absolutely no. Because my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he saw bangles of kisra in my hand. So until I wear that, I won't die. Yetha aqeedah. And during the time of Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu when Kisra was taken over, Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab got the bangles, the gold of Kisra and he, when he saw that, he called, Oh Suraqa, come forward. This is haram for the males, but because my Nabi said, you wear it. Huzur, jis ke liye jo cheez chahe halal farma de, jis ke liye jo cheez chahe haram farma de, Allahu Akbar. Now in this verse, Allah is praising his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, qualities of Rasul, making things halal, making things haram, and remover of the burdens, mentioned in the Holy Quran. Remover of the burdens, remove of the calamities is our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when he is Rasul, he is remover of the calamities even today. Aaj bhi dafi'ul bala hai. Ab jo ye kahe ke nahi, ab nahi hai. Who gave you the right to reduce the qualities of a Rasul? Who gave you the right to take off the qualities of the Rasul when Allah has made him Rasul and when he is Rasul, that means all the qualities of Rasul still exist in him. یہ ایک بات ہو گئی اب مجھے بتائیے اس آیت کریمہ میں قریب نو جگہ اللہ نے تعریف فرمائی یہ نبی ہے یہ رسول ہے یہ پاک کرنے والے ہیں یہ ناپاک چیزوں کو حرام کرنے والے پاک چیزوں کو حلال کرنے والے لوگوں کے گردنوں سے جو بوجھ ہے اس کو دور کرنے والے ہیں پوری تعریف ہے اور اس میں امی کا لفظ بھی ہے is it possible that Allah is talking about the excellence of Nabi صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم that he is so and so he is so and so he got such qualities yet he is illiterate will it be regarded as praise ایک آدمی کہ اب جیسے حضرت میری اگر تعریف کرنے لگے کہ حافظ حسان سب سری لنکا سے آئے ہیں یہ حافظ قرآن ہے ماشاءاللہ یہ بیان کرتے ہیں یہ ایسا بھی کرتے ہیں یہ وہابیوں سے لڑتے بھی ہیں مناظرہ بھی کرتے ہیں یہ سب کرتے ہیں لیکن آدمی ایک دم جاہل ہے تو یہ میری تعریف ہوئی this is not a praise this is an insult right میں جاہل تو ہوں حضرت آپ علماء کا خادم ہوں یہ یقینی بات ہے میں ایک سمجھانے کے لئے کہہ رہا ہوں تو یہاں اللہ تعالیٰ اپنے حبیب کی تعریف فرماتا ہے اور at the same time لفظ امی ہے تو کیا you mean to say Allah is praising at the same time Allah is criticizing his حبیب صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم the meaning of امی is untutored except by Allah divinely taught by Allah Allah کے سوا کسی سے نہیں پڑے اور دلیل مزید کیا وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِ ہم نے رسولوں کو جس قوم کی طرف بھیجا اس قوم کی زبان سکھا کر بھیجا تاکہ کوئی یہ نہ کہے جس نبی کا تم کلمہ پڑھتے ہو وہ میرا سٹوڈنٹ ہے اللہ did not like this that anyone call 
his prophets that he is my student so allah did not allow anyone to become teacher of his prophets allah is the teacher another and and allah taala states about nabi adam alayhi salam in the holy quran wa allama adam al asma kullaha allah taught hazrat adam alayhi salam the names of each and everything and then what happened thumma aradahum ala al malaika allah presented all those things which were to be created now this was not in dunya right this was when allah created adam alayhi salam he taught before he came to this dunya and thumma aradahum allah taught the names of everything which were to be created until qiyamah and those things were presented before the angels ala al malaika faqal allah says am bi uni bi asma iha ula in kuntum sadiqin O oh, angels now tell me the names of these things the angels responded subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana ya allah you are pure purity is to you ya allah hum nahi jante hum utna hi jante jitna tune hame sikhaya hai i know we know only what you have taught us then what did allah say ya adam o oh, my nabi adam alayhi salam am bi hum bi asma'ihim you teach the names of these things to the angels what do we understand hazrat adam alayhi salam is teacher for the angels तो नबी को जो उम्मी कहकर इस माने करके वो इलिटरेट है अरे आदम अलैहिस्सलाम को अल्लाह ने ऐसा सिखाया कि फरिश्तों के उस्ताद है और इसमें दूसरे नुक्ते की बात क्या है अल्लाह ने सिखाया वह अल्लमा लफ से यानी हर चीज का नाम ही नहीं हर चीज से क्या क्या काम होते हैं वो भी अल्लाह ने सिखा दिया ये माइक्रोफोन है इसको इंग्लिश में क्या कहेंगे अरेबिक में क्या कहेंगे तमिल में क्या कहेंगे सिंघल में क्या कहेंगे जैपनीज में क्या कहेंगे चाइनीज में क्या कहेंगे और इन ऑल द लैंग्वेज दिस वॉज टॉट and the works of this mic the benefits the disadvantages everything was taught to adam alayhi salam har cheez ke benefits har cheez ke fayde har cheez ke nuksanat har zuban mein naam sab sikhaye gaye lekin adam alayhi salam ko hukum tha farishton ko kya sikhane ke liye am bi hum bi asma un cheezon ke naam sikha do lekin un cheezon ki jo benefits hai jo uske fayde hain jo usse nuksanat hai wo hazrat adam alayhi salam ko yani hazrat adam ka knowledge farishton se bhi zyada hai and when allah says about nabi sulaiman alaihi salam fa fahamna ha sulaiman we have taught hazrat sulaiman alaihi salam wa allamna hu san'at labus lakum daud alaihi salam we have taught so allah talks about his prophet we have taught we have taught so no one is the teacher for the prophets of allah and when the matter of habib mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam came allah states ar rahman allama al quran rahman has taught you the quran and quran contains everything in detail every wit and dry every small and a greater thing everything is recorded that mean everything is taught to by allah to his habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam when allah has taught everything there is a need is there any need for a person to teach anabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam obviously no and in the quran noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun allah taala qalam ki bhi qasam yaad farma raha hai aur us jo likha jata hai uski bhi qasam to qalam ki allah qasam yaad farmata hai usse jo tehreer hai writing hai uski qasam yaad farma raha hai jab quran hi pura sikha diya to qalam bhi sikha diya tai writing bhi sikha diya padhna bhi sikha diya sab kuch sikha diya nothing is hidden from the knowledge of nabi pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam so when people they translate saying ummi min illiterate how ugly is this is this respect given to nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam absolutely not but unfortunately you find these terms illiterate in the school textbooks by the wahhabi followers now are you going to destroy the iman of your children by referring to their books absolutely no then you should be very careful and always get the guidance from the ulama of ahlus sunnati wal jamaa and further muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is rasul of allah and our nabi mentioned in the holy quran as rahmat for the entire creation rahmatan lil alam wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin alamin mean everything other than allah so we are also in the alamin the people who were before us they were also in the alamin the people after us they are in the alamin the people in the grave they are also in the alamin and on the day of judgment in the alamin jannah everything is other than allah thus everything comes under alamin when allah says about himself alhamdulillah rabbil alamin i am the sustainer for the entire creation quran wa ma huwa illa dhikrul lil alamin my kalam is remembrance nasihat for the entire creation so the term alamin when you read allah uses in three occasions 
what I am going to mention three occasion is about himself I am Rabbul Alamin. When the matter of the Quran came, Zikrul Lil Alamin, Nasihat for the entire Alamin. When the matter of Habib arise, Rahmatul Lil Alamin. For whomever I am Rabb, my Quran is Nasihat, my Habib is Rahmat. So people in dunya, our Nabi is Rahmat. People in the grave, our Nabi is Rahmat. People in the Mahshar, our Nabi is Rahmat. People in Jannah, our Nabi is Rahmat. Everywhere Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Rahmat for us. But they say, no, he was until he lived in this world now he is no more rahmat no more rahim then let us argue in light of the quran just to make them realize that how wrong they are the holy quran states laqad ja'akum rasulun min anfusikum azizun alayhi ma anittum harisun alaykum bil again bil mu'minina okay for the believers our nabi is rauf and rahim now Allah uses these names for himself. Ra'uf Allah Sifat. Rahim Allah Sifat. And Allah has bestowed these qualities to his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That my Habib is Bil Mu'minina. For the believers he is Ra'uf. For the believers he is Rahim. Aren't we believers my dear brothers? Yes or no? So say loudly Alhamdulillah we are Muslims. Alhamdulillah we are believers. We are believers. We are Muslims. Alhamdulillah. When we are believers, our Nabi is Ra'uf for us even now. Our Nabi is Rahim even for, uh, now even for us. Dalil, Quran, Bil Mu'minin. For the believers, he is Ra'uf. For the believers, he is Rahim. Now a person following Deobandism, Najdism, Salafism, Wahhabism, if he say he was, you don't need to argue. You ask them first, are you a believer? He will say yes. Okay, if you are a believer, Quran states for the believers, Nabi is Ra'uf and Rahim. But you deny that fact. You say he was, now he is no more. So that means you don't consider yourself to be a believer. If you are a believer, you accept our Nabi to Ra'uf and Rahim today. And if you do not believe in this, your problem. You do not regard yourself as a believer. That is your problem. Now we say in the Holy Quran, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ Allah is closer to us than our juggler wains. Allah Ta'ala humare shahirag se ziyada qareeb hai. اب یہ کہتے کہ دیکھو اللہ تعالیٰ جب اتنا قریب ہے تو کیوں اللہ سے ڈائریکٹ نہیں مانگتے وسیلے کی کیا ضرورت ہے سمپل آنسر the command for وسیلہ is also given by اللہ وَبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ تو ہم ڈائریکٹ بھی مانگیں گے وسیلے سے بھی مانگیں گے دونوں آیتوں پر عمل ہو جائے گا تم ایک پر عمل کرتے ہو دوسری آیت پر عمل نہیں کرتے تو قرآن پر عمل تم ہوئے یا ہم ہوئے we are following the Quran because we act on all the commands of Allah in this matter we seek direct help and we seek help by presenting the wasila of the prophets of the awliya in the court of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and again Allah ta'ala states an nabi ju awla bil mu'minin min anfusihim my nabi is closer to the believers than their selves than their souls abu huzur alayhi salam humare jaan se bhi ziyada qareeb hai jaan se bhi jaan sab se ziyada qareeb hoti hai na جان سے بھی زیادہ قریب کیا مطلب ہوا ہمارے دل میں جو ارادے آتے ہیں نا وہ بھی حضور جانتے ہیں اس لئے کہ جان سے زیادہ قریب ہے he is aware of our actions he is aware of our intentions but again they say no no it is impossible because our Nabi he left this world how can he be closer to you then again no argument you just refer to this verse an Nabi ju awla bil for the believers our Nabi is closer if you consider yourself to be a believer, you should believe our Nabi is closer to us even today. We are believers, so our Nabi is knowing us. He is aware of us. And if you do not regard this, that means you don't consider yourself to be a believer. That is your problem. You don't understand yourself. That is your problem. When you don't understand yourself, why do you come to us with us? Do you have to prove your faith before? You don't have to prove your faith before. So when we recite the kalima, that he is Rasul of Allah, that means all the qualities of Rasul still exists in him. And if anyone denies this, he is wrong in his recitation of Kalima. Wo Kalima to padta hai, Rasul hai, lekin Rasul ki qualities ko wo apni taraf se ghata deta hai. Allah ne Quran mein kahi bhi ye nahi farmaya, jab tak dunia mein hai, tab tak aap mukhtar hai. Jab tak dunia mein hai, tabhi tak aapko authority di gai, nahi. 
نبی پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم حدیثوں کی روشنی میں آج بھی ہمارے اعمال سے واقف ہے آج بھی ہمارے دلوں کے ارادوں سے واقف ہے آج بھی حضور علیہ السلام اللہ کی عطا سے حکومت فرماتے ہیں اور اس پر میں تو کیا کہوں ابن تیمیہ کا اسٹوڈنٹ ابن قیم جوزیہ نے اپنی کتاب کتاب و روح میں لکھا کہ کئی مرتبہ ایسا ہوا کہ جنگ کے دوران لوگوں نے صحابہ نے دیکھا جو صحابہ وصال کر چکے تھے ان صحابہ کو اور نبی پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو جنگ میں مدد کرتے ہوئے دیکھا ہے آفٹر لیونگ دس ورلڈ ہولی پروفٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ دی صحابہ دے ہیو ہیلپ دا بلیورس ان جہاد مینشن بائی ابن قیم جوزیہ ان ہس کتاب کتاب الروح ہو از اسٹوڈنٹ آف ابن تیمیہ ہمارے علماء کی بات نہیں مانتے کم سے کم تمہارے علماء کی تو مان لو لیکن نہیں کیوں دے آر یوزنگ ہپوکریسی دے آر ٹرائنگ ٹو اسٹیل دا ایمان آف آر چلڈرن دس از وائی ڈیورنگ دیٹ ٹائم وین دس واز آن پیک اعلیٰ حضرت امام احمد رضا رحمۃ اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ ورکڈ ہارڈ ان آرڈر ٹو پروٹیکٹ آر ایمان اینڈ ہز خلفا دے اسٹرائب ہارڈ for the sake of the protection of our iman and through them alhamdulillah we have ulama here respect your ulama take care of them take good care of them and learn as much as possible the aqeed of ahl sunnati wal jamaah so that you could protect your iman and the iman of your children and my dear brothers we invite those people as well that before it's too late come come to the fold of ahl sunnah because ala hazrat beautifully stated aaj le in ki panah آج مدد مانگ ان سے پھر نہ مانیں گے قیامت میں اگر مانگیں ٹو مور آن دی ڈے آف ججمنٹ یو ول ہیو ٹو ایکسپٹ دیٹ ایوری تھنگ از تھرو دی شفات آف نبی پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایوری تھنگ از فار دا سیک آف نبی پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم یو ہیو ٹو ایکسپٹ بٹ دیٹ از ٹو لیٹ آج لے ان کی پناہ آج مدد مانگ ان سے یو شوڈ بلیو ان ہم یو شوڈ بلیو ان ہم نو سو وی انوائٹ دوز پیپل دوز ہو unknowingly follow the Wahhabism and utter such things, we honestly and politely invite them, come to the fold of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, protect your Iman, and if not, if not, then Allah Hazrat has said few things. Sar suwe roza jhuka, phir tujko kiya. Dil tha sajid najdiya, phir tujko kiya. Baithte, uthte, madad ke waaste, Ya Rasool Allah kaha, phir tujko kiya. نجدی مرتا ہے کہ کیوں تعظیم کی یہ ہمارا دین تھا پھر تجھ کو کیا اور دیو کے بندوں سے کب ہے یہ خطاب ہو از ایڈریسنگ ٹو یو تم سے کس نے خطاب کیا ہو از ایڈریسنگ ٹو یو او دیو بند دیو کے بندوں سے کب ہے یہ خطاب ہم ہے عبد مصطفیٰ پھر تجھ کو کیا وی آر سلیوس آف دی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اور دیو کے بندوں سے ہم کو کیا غرض ہم ہے عبد مصطفیٰ پھر تجھ کو کیا دیو تجھ سے خوش ہے پھر ہم کیا کرے ہم سے راضی ہے خدا پھر تجھ کو کیا And still if you don't want to realize, oh the followers of Wahhabism, teri dozakh se to kuch hi na le. We have not, we did not steal anything from your hellfire. Because in light of the Quran, the kuffar and munafiqin will be in the hellfire permanently. They will be there permanently. So you don't want to stay permanently, oh followers of Wahhabism? Come, come to the fold of Ahlul Sunnah. And if you don't want, teri dozakh se to kuch hi na nahi. خلد میں پہنچا رضا پھر تجھ کو کیا سبحانک اللہم و بحمدک اشہدو اللہ الہ الا انت استغفرک و اتوبو الیک